that I love so well. Valentine's Day tomorrow, a big box of black magic for everybody in the audience. There it is. From the makers of black magic. From the makers of black magic, that's one for everybody in the audience. Aren't you lucky tonight? Now, the next fella on, I, I, we are going to get a big audience in Dundee Dog tonight, I can tell you, I can tell you that. Because this fella from Carrick and Candy Candy Dundee Dog appeared with Killa on Blind Date last week. Made a holy show the whole lot of them. Look at this tip. Roll the fair race, please. Roll. What's your name and where do you come from? Uh, my name is Bernard and I come from Carrick and County Dundee Dog. <laughs> You've got several jobs, haven't you, Bert? Well, first and foremost, uh, I, work in a, I work within the fishing industry. That's... <laughs> oh, no, the, the fishing industry. You did have a problem with your re sir. Yeah, I broke a tooth in the front of my mouth to a point where I have a false tooth in the front of my mouth. Let's have a look. Which one is... Uh... <laughs> Exactly what you want from a man. I mean, you've got oh, a few no-nos and you've got a few yes-yeses. Well, what are the must-haves? <laughs> okay, the must-have, good teeth. The dream boat of the week from Carrick and County Donegal, Bernard McHugh. Here he is. <laughs> Come out wherever you are. Yes, yes. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> okay. Over this way. <laughs> Over this way. You're standing there like President McAleese <laughs> all of a sudden. You're all done from Carrick. And the How hair is genuine, ladies and gentlemen, because I, I have to tell you that I've known this fellow now for a good number of years because he's turned up <coughs> as a member of the choir in our Oklahoma show, That's in right. our Pirates of Penzance, in our National Concert Hall. Always came along to help uh, lend a hand with the choir and do a bit of song singing and all of that. Well, you've had some week. I've had an unbelievable week. <laughs> in fact, I even feel like President Mary McAleese. <laughs> You don't look like President Mary. I know I don't look like President, but I, I definitely feel like it. It has been unreal. When I stop in a town, I would nearly ha want to have somebody with me to send them in for the message because I'm off to myself. I mean, the amount of people that's, I mean, the amount of people that's coming and actually wishing me well and, and, you know, saying that they enjoyed the show and it's made the whole thing worth it. You know, the whole thing, it's been unbelievable. And you're still unreal. not drinking. And I'm still not drinking. And you're still not smoking. And I'm still not smoking. Aren't you a great fellow? There's no doubt. A lifelong <laughs> pioneer he is. Now, Emma, <coughs> the gorgeous girl. Now, I mean, you did, did you do well? How did you do the first of I mean, did you do Emma and I, we, we did, we, we were incompatible. <laughs> well, it's the only word I can find, like, to describe, you know, incompatible. But, but. We never ran, for two people that were incompatible and had nothing in common, we never ran out of conversation. <laughs> never. We yapped all day. What did you talk about? Um, she talked about what she, what she done for a living. Uh, I talked about what I done for a living. Um, we talked about our ambitions. We talked about uh, hobbies. We talked about this. We talked about that. We talked about literally everything. But there was no love, no love or romance or anything. No, like there was that. no love or romance. No hanky panky. No hanky panky. No, it was all good fun. And did you did you regret that there was no hanky panky, Bernard? Uh, I didn't really regret it because I mean, I just set out originally to go basically as a bit of fun, basically. As a bit of fun, for a bit of a laugh, and I mean, if you go into it looking for love, you're going to be disappointed. It's as simple as that. Okay, there is a number of couples that do come out of it. What a bit of love, but it didn't happen. But she was a case. very attractive girl. She is a very attractive uh, girl. Well, I'll put it to you this way. If anyone saw me 
walk in her and to any establishment that our men in the establishment would admire my taste. <laughs> and that's the only way I can put it. And if you were, if you were incompatible, did she explain it in the stage why she found you incompatible? With her. No, you see, I knew from the night, the, the wedding, that uh, Tuesday night, it was film Tuesday night, and we went out to dinner that night. I knew on the line of conversation that we didn't have a whole lot in common. In fact, we had nothing in common. Nothing in common. Nothing. And did she have difficulty understanding you, Bernard? No. I, no. Funny enough, she hadn't. No. <laughs> you know, I know my accent was totally alien to what hers was, like, but... We had no problem, you know, we had no co problem with accents or anything like that. Did you do your trick with the tooth for her? Funny enough, she didn't know about the tooth until... Mm, she didn't see it. She actually didn't like see it, did I? I think yes, she got a bit of a shock when yeah. I... <laughs> <laughs> well, well do, your, do your thing with the tooth now, yeah, then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It actually makes a noise. It does. I can turn it over in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I know he doesn't like it, but... <laughs> why do I... Why do I get myself into these things, I ask? <laughs> so now you're, you're in the fish factory in, in, in Carrick. Well, I haven't been in it all week. Uh, no, I would imagine not, no. <laughs> no. But uh, normally I'm there. Normally I'm there. Yes, and then uh, uh, why did you give up farming? You, you never explained well, that to me. Well, I really... To be honest with you, I didn't really like farming. There was too much work attached to it. So what, <laughs> well, it's true, like, you work all day and you work all night. And basically, I sort of regard myself as a sort of a retired farmer. <laughs> so that's basically what I am like. Yes, I see. So you wouldn't be bothered milking cows or looking after oh, animals? No, no, no. I, I, not that, it's not that I don't like animals, but it's just, I find it's just... Mm, it's, there's just too much work in it for me, you know. Yeah, yeah. And did they look after you well on blind days? You, you, you. Uh, it was unbelievable, the treatment that we got on blind days. I would advise any young person... <laughs> that goes for two slides. That goes for two. I would advise any young person with any iota of nerve just to go. Because the way you're, you're treated like royalty from you go over to you come back. You're just treated like, literally, like royalty. Well, if that's the case, you went to London a day ahead of the big day, <laughs> but you ended up at the airport <coughs> on the day Blind Date was being shot. I did. Well, you see, there was a friend of mine, there was a friend of mine going over to London. Aye. On the Monday. Aye. Now, I didn't, to be honest with you, to be honest with you, that was, to go to London was my second time out of the country. <laughs> Where was the first time? Then? The first time we went over to Edinburgh with a play. The August before that. With a play. With a play. Right. So now, this was the second time. This was the, the second time. Run. Now, when you have a group of people going over to any given country, the person that's in charge of that given group of people takes care of the whole the whole thing. Oh, and you great. just walk on, walk off. Now we went over by by by, by the Stena line. Ah. But I was never I never flew before. So I didn't actually know. I know it sounds stupid. I mean, it sounds <laughs> terrible stupid, but I didn't actually know what to do in an airport. <laughs> that is gospel truth. So I had this friend, this friend was going over on the Monday, and he said, why don't you travel over with me? He knows what to do in an he airport. He knows what to do in an airport. <laughs> Go for the plane. Yeah. So we got the, we got the ticket changed from the... Tuesday to, the, to Monday. the Monday. And you went to London with him? With him on the Monday and evening. stayed overnight with him? Stayed overnight with right. him. So then on Tuesday, you were due in the studio? I was due in the studio. Now, I woke up... Now, just picture this. I woke up in London, locked out the window, and didn't know where on God's earth I was. <laughs> now, I knew I was in London. I knew I was in London, but I didn't know what part of London. And there was no point in ringing LWT going, oh, I'm in London. <laughs> well, where, where was your friend? Well, my friend, you see, was away working. He was not going to work, work so you woke late, late, I see. So there and you are, you didn't I know where you were. As usual, I slept in, you see. Because yeah. of travelling and all that. Thing, you know. But, um, so, I locked out the window. I said, where in Linham J am I? 
Uh, That's Irish. Uh, <laughs> he didn't say in the name of it. He said Inanim J. I looked out the window and I just didn't know where I was. Right. So, so I rang my friend and I told him to take me back out, to, you see, to avoid complicating matters. I went from the centre of London back out to Heathrow Airport. We'll say, I'll put it to you this way, I went round the back. <laughs> Of Heathrow Airport. Of Heathrow Airport. And came on what the flight that I originally should have been on. <laughs> now, so, you... so the car from the studio was there to meet was you. Was there to meet and me. And they didn't know that you weren't coming off the plane. And they didn't know that I... You see, now, uh, did, you ever watch, did you ever watch the John Wayne film Brannigan? Uh, uh, probably. But there's a bit of it, you see, it was shot in London, and there's a bit of it when oh, he steals a yellow... He steals a yellow Capri. That's right, he does. A yellow Capri. Well, the driving that my friend done out to Heathrow Airport, because I was running late, was a bit like the driving that John Wayne made through London and a yellow Capri in the film Brannigan. That was, a, that was the only way I could describe the driving he made. I see. Dangerous stuff. But we got there, like, because there's no point in complicating things. Yes. You see? <laughs> <laughs> And did, did Emma, you, 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 you said, I know that you're a straightforward person and you eat beef or mutton. That's right. And, and nothing else. Or oh, nothing else. Nothing else. Nothing else. And you don't drink, so you like milk. At your That's day. right. And you went into the restaurant in Paris and did they have, well, it was all. Well, you see, uh, you, you see, went into I, this had a, restaurant. I had a problem in France. And the problem was this it was a language barrier. <laughs> <laughs> On their part. <laughs> That's right, on their part. On their part. <laughs> yep. But you see, now I'll, I'll, I'll just give you an example of the type of... Uh, the, 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 it was a typical French restaurant, right? That's it would be in uh, Paris, uh, Paris. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> Paris. <laughs> yes. You see, we were done, we sat at the table, ah. Emma and I, and the writing on the wall was in French. <laughs> the menus were French. People around us were talking French. There is a thing. <laughs> and unfortunately... In France, in France, even the kids speak French. That's right. And yeah. unfortunately, you're not seeing anything against the crate that I am, like, but the waitress hadn't a word English. <laughs> now, Emma, you see, Emma would pack up the, the, the menu, and fortunately enough for me, she had enough French to go, well, that dish there has beef, because, you see, or that dish there has lamb, or that dish there has mutton. You see, I could pack it up and you could order something, something, like something else, Max was like something, and you could end up with frog's legs or sheep's eyes or <laughs> something that you didn't really want to eat, you know. So, she would tell me that dish there. Now, you see, what you must remember, I come from a farming background. Live out in the country. And most, co I mean, who here is from the country? Oh, they're all from the country. They're all from the country. <laughs> now, you'll all agree with me that if you come from a farming background, You'll drink a big mug of milk with your dinner. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, it's true, like, you'll always drink a big mug of milk. Right, I always drink a big mug of milk with my dinner. Of course. Now, this waitress came round, she took her order, and then she arrived back to the table with a bottle of wine, her holding it like that there. Now, since I don't drink, a bottle of wine wasn't a, a whole lot of good to me, like, unless I would just leave it sitting there and just look at it, like. So, I said to her, I says, well, I, I looked up her and I says, uh, can I have a large glass of milk, please? And she went something, something, like something else, monsieur. So I gathered that she would no English. So I tried lay milk. <laughs> and then I tried la milk. <laughs> and it didn't work. And Emma, for a split second, forgot what the Frenchman milk was. And she tried to communicate with the girl as to what I wanted. But after a while, I says, Emma, hold on a minute, we're getting nowhere here. <laughs> just, just hold on a minute. And I locked up for her, and I took a good deep breath, and I went, you know what? Uh, moo, moo. <laughs> and it worked. It worked. It worked. I think there's two new words now in the French vocabulary. <laughs> <laughs> well... <laughs> 
We're going, we're going to see now the culmination of all of this tomorrow night on Blind Date right, and yes. see how you got on with Emma. There's, there's nothing disastrous. Oh, no, 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 it's all good, clean no, no, all good, clean all fun. All good, clean And fun. do you think she'll be nice about you? Ah, well, I know for a fact that, uh, you see, I've already, I've already seen her voice, like, and the, the, a lot, a lot let out, a lot. <laughs> No, not that way, you know. I, mean, I know, I know what you're like. <laughs> ah, no, I've already, I've already, I've already saw what she has said. Ah, and the only thing that I will say is yes. that we're still in contact. And that's, you're not, you're not going so far as to suggest that there is hope yet. Ah, no, 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 say no, there's no, hope, no, no, but we're still in contact. We're still in contact. We're still and in you contact. didn't say anything nasty about that. Ah, no, I mean, I I mean she was a nice, she was a very nice sort yeah. of a person. You know, right. very easy to get on with, an easy going sort of a person. She was always game for a laugh. Uh, when we were up on the Eiffel Tower, if I had to say to her, why don't we not jump out over it for the crack, she would have jumped. <laughs> you know, she was always game for a laugh. That's you a know. laugh, I love off the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> That's very funny. You know, she's always for a laugh. Very Now, the part from you, you do a bit of video stuff for weddings yeah, and, and right. that sort of thing, and then you do you're the strippogram. You go, you right. attend hen parties. That's right. He attends hen parties, Mrs. He goes to hen parties and he strips for the women that, at the hen. Isn't that what you do? That's what I do, yeah. You mean full Monty? Or not altogether full Monty, no, you not see? Altogether full Monty. <laughs> <laughs> you see, in rural Ireland, <clears throat> in rural Ireland, in rural Ireland, you see, you have to, you know, you have to, you cou you can't go over the borderline, you know, you right. can't go to, you know, you can reveal so much, but you can't do, you know, because, you know what the way it is, like no, in a country, you see, well, news like that travels, uh, travels fast, <laughs> you know. And you don't want to create a scandal, like, no, you know no, what I mean. No. So we always keep it, as I say, again, good, clean fun. Good clean, good clean. So, fun. so you go into these hen parties just as, go a surprise, that, as a surprise. And you're dressed as you are, and dressed as I am, and, th and, and then, uh, then I start off singing something like uh, "Suspicious Minds." Suspicious Minds. Uh, you see that? Well, sometimes you might start with maybe the wonder of you, <laughs> then go on to "Suspicious Minds," and you see, it, it sort of, I don't know what it does to the crowd, but it it sort of psychs them up. Suspicious Minds. It does. It sort of. Bills, because they know what's going to happen in the way like. And then uh, I start on to a song called Delilah. Now, Delilah goes back to a competition that I was in in Glenty's many, many moons ago. I'm not going to say how many years ago it is. But I won it, and I didn't want it on the sense of my singing abilities. I won it on the sense of the fact that I took off my jacket, my tie, and my short while I was doing it. And must be, there might have been some, there must have been some woman or woman at the show that night that reckoned God he would be mighty for a hen night we must get him <laughs> and it sort of it sort of went from there I went to one hen night I went to two hen nights and then I went here there and every for all over the country doing hen nights come, oh. come over and sing to <laughs> come, come on give it a bit of crack for the crack <laughs> for the crack right okay give, give us one verse of Delilah just one person, Delilah. Pat Crowley, thank you very much indeed. Pat there is on piano. What? Do you know your key there, Bernard? Uh, you... Uh, right. <laughs> oh, them things, them, like, them things happen late. <laughs> You've just broken our microphone. I know. Right, I'm very mechanical. I just need to get it. You have a microphone on your jacket anyway, you see, Bernard. You can sing on that. Oh, there it is. That's all right. No. That's right. Great. Great. Okay, okay, that's lovely. Right. Right. Now, Check before I start singing, right. before you start singing, I would like to dedicate this to the management and staff of Michael Honey's. Of Michael Honey's? And Ballet Buffet. In Ballet Buffet. <laughs> because they, supply, they give me this lovely suit, shirt and tie to wear on the Late Late Show tonight. Yes. And I would like to dedicate that yeah. to the management and staff of Michael Honey's. I saw the light on the night that I passed by her window I saw the flickering shafts of love on her blind and went out of my mind. Okay, all together, let's do it. My, 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 my,
slave that no man could free. At break of day, as that man drove away, I was waiting. Baby, la 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 la. I crossed the street to her house, and she opened her door. Her daughter, la 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 la. quiz is tragic, major, epic, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. I know opening bookings for your man. I know opening bookings for your man. All dealings through me, please. I get 10%. Bernard, God bless you. Good luck. Thank you very much indeed. Bernard McHugh from Donegal. Good night. God bless you. See you next week. Goodbye. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> am